Good morning, everybody. My name is Tahir or Taz from the Active Wellbeing Society. Today, I'm not out doing a walk. As you can see, I'm indoors today. Unfortunately, the weather has put a dampener on things, so I'm not out doing my walk as planned. But what I have got for you is a very, very interesting conversation between friends. I'm learning about what's been happening during the COVID pandemic and how organizations have stepped forward and really helped our communities, especially the most deprived communities of Birmingham. So apologies, there will be no walk, but in this um, video, I have tagged in a walk I did yesterday. So I was prepared. I, I came out yesterday and I knew the weather was really nice yesterday afternoon. So I did the walk that we were planning to do today and I've got it captured in a lovely format called Relive. It's tagged into this video. So if you get a chance to watch this video later, do go out and retrace those steps. It starts right outside here where the building I'm at, which I'll introduce shortly, in a park called Phillip Street Park. It then takes on, on, takes you across into Yellow Park. Yellow Park takes you into Burberry Park. Burberry Park takes you into George's Park. And these are all amazing because it cuts through the most deprived communities of Birmingham that will really need to help during this pandemic. And um, really, um, it's it shows the beauty and the greenness of Birmingham. Despite being in these areas as well, you can find a place to escape for your well-being, for your walk, for your, uh, you know, for your for your mental mental health. Really, to be out in green spaces, and we know the benefits of that. So today, I'm going to introduce to you to my guests. So I'm going to get comfortable. We're going to have a conversation, and we're going to talk about some of the work and some of the organisations that we've tagged in today, and uh, others as well that we we unfortunately couldn't invite today. So. Green Lane Mask, Masjid Aisha, all the other amazing charities and organisations and faith establishments that have been stepping up and doing some great work that we've called Brum Together, hashtag Brum Together. So let me introduce my first guest. I'll turn the camera. Do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, good morning everybody. Um, my name is um, Adil and I am representing a, a masjid or a mosque called Masjid Fala in Ashton on Finnish Road. Brilliant. Thank you, Adil. And my second guest today? Yeah, hi, uh, my name is Zegum uh, from Loft 25 and we ran the uh, Loft 25 PPE campaign in partnership with uh, Green Lane Masjid. Fantastic. Well, thank you both for joining me. I'm going to start off with Adil. So, yeah. Adil, um, you represent the Masjid, which is the, uh, the Masjid Al Fala. Yeah. Um, it's in Aston yep. on Trinity Road. That's right. Brilliant. And how long have you been in in, uh, in the management team of the masjid? So we've, I've been with them since the construction of the, the new build right now, which is about 10 years or so. Uh, but I've been running the show around five years now. It's the sixth yeah. year actually. Uh, so I've been at the helm, um, trying to make the mosque the centre of the community really. That's the, the aim for the last sort of five years or so. Brilliant. So we, in March, we got struck by the pandemic mm -hmm. and things had to change drastically. And how did you change the way you worked in the masjid to help benefit the community? So um, it's quite um, pertinent that we are in this building today, by the way. I'll just give you a bit of a background yeah. because this building is well as so far. And really, um, when we started um, looking inwards and outwards of how, as a mosque, we need to reach out for the community, we looked um, around and seen, saw who are the guys who are doing the best work. And, and to be honest, uh, as so far, where we are today, were one of the, the leading pioneers of, of outreach work that was happening. So we, we tagged along with them over the last sort of year or so, doing a project for the homeless, uh, which is a shelter that ourselves and Urban Law 35 actually helped in this process along with Green Lane Mosque. And we thought, how can we all uh, reach out to the, uh, the community? And we started working on that. And in, in the middle of all that, the pandemic happened. Um, the vision we had then was to, we, we had to stop the mosque, the vision we had was, yes, we are going to stop the congregation, but we do not want to stop for the community. So the vision then was to make sure we're still open for the community as at large. Uh, as we started looking around, we started knocking at doors, trying to find out uh, what was the real need. And it was really uh, evident from the number of people we reached and approached that food or the lack of food within the great city of Birmingham was the biggest problem we were having actually. Um, people were, uh, they had no jobs. Yeah, there were always the whole case on the schools being closed down. So there was a whole lot of uh, stuff that was going on. Even if you if you remember those days when the Tesco's and Asda's were completely ransacked with, with all the food gone. So we had to do something really drastically. So then 
I approached us so far at that point and they were already doing a food delivery program. And I thought, well, let's go out and help them. But the task was so humongous. The need was so dire that we, we just thought we can't do this ourselves. And then someone said to us to talk to yourself, Tahir, and, and to the tours. And that's where the real partnership began. So between Asufa, ourselves, Greenland Mosque, 25, tours, and Birmingham City Council, we started then, um, we started a food pantry in, in our mosque. And from there onwards, we started delivering food around the community. Uh, at its peak, and I remember we were, we were doing nearly 107, 108 parcels of food a day. We would have volunteers piling up in the car park, um, like real delivery system, like we have McDonald's and, and other places, just pick up the parcels and go out and deliver them. So I, I think over the last eight months or so, uh, up and down from a peak perspective, we are now covered more than 5,000 food parcels over the last sort of eight months. Mm -hmm. And then we started doing free school meals and there are lots of other stuff, but I can talk to you all day. You could, I think, talk to, <laughs> talk to well, the Zegum uh, about this more further on. That's brilliant, so uh, amazing. And I just want to say uh, thank you from my, before I forget to say at the end, no. Um, when uh, tours were looking to partner up with organizations um, I remember you know the great work you were doing in the masjid already and it was a great opportunity to invite yourself in and you took the chance straight you know you, you took the opportunity uh, and you were step you step forward you're one of the first along with us suffer one of the first organizations to come and join our food justice network that we created yep. um, and we started making an immediate effect on people's Absolutely, lives yeah. so Thank you on behalf of Tours as well. Thank you. Um, over to Brother Zagum. So Brother Zagum, you are also, um, you know, you, you've got your own business. It's called Love 25. And you stepped up in an amazing and unique way to help people of Birmingham through something that you could give back. And could you explain your project and what you did? Sure. Um, I mean, exactly how our, our, our brother, brother was saying about, you know, the, the, the masjid stepping up on the food. It was like a, there's no debate. It's a, if people are hungry, what what must we do? We have to step up and do something about it straight away. So very similarly, we had um, it, our kind of whole whole project started with a doctor turning up to my house, and saying we need food to eat, and they'd heard they didn't even know me. They just they'd heard of me um, that I had a, a textiles kind of related factory, and said look um, we need food to eat, and I said, didn't know what PPE looked like. Um, so I was like, okay, what do you need? And they said, well, we need gowns, we need something to protect us and so we can take those off. And they told me this story of like how they would come into the house and they would get changed in the doorway and drop all their clothes into a bag, walk naked through their house into, into, the, into the shower, come out, wash, have, uh, wash those clothes um, and then get changed so that their family wouldn't be affected by anything. Because we, we knew nothing about the virus at this point, you know, it was very kind of unknown. Um, and so, so I heard this and I thought, okay, we must do something. And so I phoned around because I initially thought I'll be able to find, um, I'll be able to source it for them. So I just phoned all the wholesalers and importers I knew and said, yeah, we need, you know, we need PPE garments and to donate. And there was no stock. There was literally nothing available. In fact, they were saying to me, if you can find it, please let us know because we're getting so many hospitals inquiring. So then I actually managed to get hold of one and they actually dropped it off. I put it through the washing machine three times at my house before I brought it into work. And, and we actually looked at it and thought, well, like, we could make this. But yet, because of the lockdown, we had no staff available. So there was, everybody was furloughed or they were at home and nobody was allowed to be in kind of confined spaces. So we couldn't actually get our sewing rooms operating. We couldn't get sewing machinists to sew everything. So this is when we thought, well, what we could do is put out a call for volunteers. So I remember kind of asking my, my, my 16 year old daughter at the time to say, look, could you put something out on social media for me? To say, look, we need volunteers. We're going to try to, to, to produce PPE. So we had like 100 volunteers in the first day. And we thought, okay, so we've got 100 people at home with sewing machines willing to actually produce. So if they're willing to do that, then we, we can get going. Second hurdle was there was no material available. So the material is very specific. It has to be waterproof. It has to be lightweight. It has to have, have certain qualities. So we had to find this material. So I spent a whole day on the phone trying to get hold of some. And I managed to talk one supplier into, into giving me some. But everybody was closed, so all suppliers were closed. But I talked one into going to the warehouse, opening it, and letting our driver collect um, in Manchester and, and bring it back to us. So we now had material. I now had uh, nobody to cut it. 
Yeah. So we went to the next stage of like, I asked uh, ex staff, so I've got a group with all the people who've worked for us for the last 10, 15 years. And so I put it on the group saying, if anyone wants to come back to work and help with this project, it would really help us out. And so they all came back. And so they came and they ran all the cutting 24 hours a day. They were just cutting away and we were giving it out to the volunteers. But now to give it to them, we needed drivers. And all the drivers of Birmingham, all the people willing to volunteer from all the projects we all get involved in, were working with these guys. Yeah, <laughs> so because we were delivering food. Yeah. So so we had to we had to we had to basically jump on the back of that and say, look, as you're dropping off food, could you collect garments and 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 and, right. and pick them That's up again when, when sponsors sewn? So we had these drivers doing that as well at the same time. So that, uh, at the peak there was a hundred drivers. Mm-hmm. There were nine hundred people sewing. So we had all of them being involved in every community. So we had like, for example, the, the C community was a, was a pillar of the project. They, they stepped up and said, look, we, we've got sewing machines. We're, we're into this kind of garment trade and we can help. And they did. They really uh, you know, went out of their way. And every community, I mean, you know, I, I, can, I can name them all day, right? But yeah. everybody really stepped up and helped. Off the back of that project then, we in the end produced 25,000 um, wow. garments. So that's what was able to be distributed out to, to all the, I mean, the list is really long. We were doing a card list at the moment of like all the people to thank. Uh, and, and, you know, the list of recipients is huge. It's like doctor surgeries, ambulance services, care homes, and uh, yeah. NHS trusts all around the Midlands. Uh, we had funeral uh, services in Birmingham, Manchester, London. We had the Jewish care homes uh, network in, in Manchester. We had like so anyone who asked we didn't say no so this was outside of birmingham as this well so anywhere in the country anybody i mean initially we thought well if we can cover birmingham it would be a good run but in the end we couldn't say no to anybody so we were like well whoever wants it if you've got it come and collect it and um, and so they did um, and then often on our drives we'd see nurses and, and you know because key workers were the only people out and we'd see them and see them with no ppe on coming out of of, of uh, home visits and I just stop, I would stop my car and say, look, if you need PPE, just pop into Block 25 and we'll give it to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and they were shocked because like at that time, people were profiteering. So, yeah. so yeah. all of these things were costing huge amounts of money, whereas our, our whole project was we were just donating. Um, so, you know, all the volunteers are the ones who made it happen. We just had the idea that we can do something and said, we will then. If yeah. we can, we must. And, and they're the ones who actually did it. I mean, they sacrificed because they had to sew. They had to, to, to drop off and collect. They, had, they ran the project. We had volunteers, uh, you know, through, through Green Lane. We had, like, lots of uh, people volunteer to come and actually run the project. So when, when people were on, were on furlough, they weren't allowed to work, but they were allowed to volunteer. Yes, yes. So that was a, a, a real godsend because we had then a team of really capable people. Um, so, you know, some of them, like Elias Khan, uh, he, he was uh, someone who, who, who actually developed software with his company, TSG, to actually run the whole project. And that that software allowed batch processing. So we would know if there was an outbreak anywhere along the the, the chain that uh, we would be able to isolate the garments. Mm. So there was batches going on with everything that was going out and and the NHS in Birmingham, because Birmingham Community Trust actually replicated that software because we were we were the first you leading the way yeah and yeah. and so they did that and then my daughter was actually recruited by them so because she was our first volunteer on our project she was the youngest youngest NHS worker in in in, in the country we think and because she just turned 16 they had to get special permission to employ her but she ran then a team of 1400 volunteers wow. um, which was amazing experience for her like she would love to now go into a career in NHS management because of it um, it's kind of inspired her too but so we got to, you know, as a family, as a community, and as all our establishments, uh, Sufa and, uh, and Green Lane, and uh, our company, Lock 25, and, and, and Tours, and all of these, uh, you know, brum together indeed, yeah. <laughs> Birmingham stepped up. And even now I get phone calls from, from around the country saying how, how Birmingham is so amazing because they did so much. People saw it, uh, you know, online. People could see everything they looked at. It was like Birmingham was like leading the way which was a great privilege that we got to be involved in that. Uh, really was. Um, and, you know, especially for you, for, for yourselves, keeping Birmingham fit 
I thought was so inspiring, right? It's made me feel more unfit. I don't know about you, but... Uh, <laughs> no. Adil was a bit worried we were going to go like, for a long go, walk go today. Walking. But thankfully, the way he, the he, he prayed for the rain and the rain came. Oh, so. I was having a great time with them at Edgbaston Reservoir every week oh, yeah. because we were training for the, the, the 10K in Lemon. Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. yes. And you must do that with us next year, right? And uh, you haven't done it. Yeah, I haven't done it. I was training for it as well. So yeah. so, so, so we were meeting at Edgbaston Reservoir because the, because they, 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 do the, they do a 5K and a 2.5 yeah I was only doing the 2.5 right? yeah. because one lap of the reservoir was all I could manage but we were building up yeah um, we uh, every Sunday we were trying to get to be ready for this 10k and then it was cancelled yeah and then I, my fitness especially just went like <laughs> crashed well and, it wasn't just yours it was a whole whole, <laughs> whole of Birmingham's because we were in lockdown yeah. people didn't want to go out they were a bit fear, fear, fearful of going out didn't know about the virus didn't know how it kind mm. of passed um, so people stayed in and the state's mental health dropped and Sport England research has showed that now. So now what we're trying to do is we know the benefits of this, uh, you know, being outdoors in green space and exercise to help overcome, you know, the, the, the negativity of the virus and the me negative effects of the virus. So now we're encouraging people to still go out. So we were encouraging them in the lockdown to go out once a day. And I kind of led the way, showed them how to do it, go to a, find a local green space do whatever your ability allows you to do whether that's walking jogging that's cycling insane. and what you may have noticed others well that during the first pandemic it was so lovely to see multi-generational people coming out walking together as families people had time because they weren't busy and life slowed down because of the pandemic you had time to kind of gather your priorities and and family was a priority and being out with your family was so important so I, would, I, I love it when I'm looking outside my window and see families walking together, whether they're taking the dog for a walk, whether they're going by themselves, whether the children are on a bike or on a, uh, one of those push, push, uh, push bike things. Um, so it was lovely to see that. And, and now we're hoping that we can inspire more people to get into activity of some sort for their physical and mental well-being. Um, but we're going to come back to Zagan because you mentioned social media. Now, social media has been so important, I think, yeah, yeah. in the quick response that we got to to Brum Together, to Loft 25's campaign. Because I followed your campaign from the start. Mm -hmm. I helped, it, I shared it on, I, I got people involved. I asked my family to volunteer who are uh, also in the trade as well. Um, and it was great to follow the progress of your, 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 your response to the pandemic in the way you could help. Um, and you sacrifice a lot. You're a business owner. Your own business was probably suffering at the time, but you put that aside to help others. So just want to highlight that you know it's it's doing something good for the sake of you know a, a reward from from God really. And I, yeah. You know, and I, I would I would correct you on that because that you know on on the at the time that we made the decision to to go all out, and you know the people were, people were saying to me you know and close people to me were saying you're being you're being a bit silly. Mm -hmm. You're giving away too much, and um, you're 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 risking your your family security here. And the opposite actually happened. So people think that you know, like you, you, yeah. you know, so, no, so what actually ended up happening was that God gives, right? And and that's a fundamental part of our our, our belief system. You give uh, to to the to to His people, right? So you help you help the people around you because you must, and you know you help the people who need help. And it's, it's, He looks after you, right? Yeah. In that sense, right? So. So what actually happened was we when we started the campaign, I didn't really have enough funds to actually run it, but I just went for it. I thought even if I lost everything, so what? I mean, in the end, there's lives at stake. How do you value a life? Mm -hmm. I can't value a life against financial assets, can I? Mm -hmm. Not even one, right? So so what do you do? You just go for it, and I did at the time. Within days, um, internet because we sell online, mm -hmm. and the, everybody was locked locked down. And suddenly, our our business like took off to, to a level we'd never thought possible, and we had to recruit fifty more people, which was which was amazing. That like you know people were looking for jobs, and and we got to put out a text message saying we've got jobs, and people came and like you know they were like so grateful to have employment, um, and we got to got to have that. So for us, it was like we were paid back like within three days of like look here you give with this hand, but with that hand you keep receiving as well. So we were really, really kind of, you know, uh, grateful for that, for that because it funded the whole campaign and we didn't have to worry. I was going to say, 
from you know, I think there's nothing good out of a pandemic. But if, if there's ever a silver lining in all this process, uh, was the connection that it made amongst organisations. It's the it's the ability of people to step up at the right time uh, for the people. And I'm just I was just listening to Zegum about the story, and it's about life and death. If you think about it, that piece of cloth or that piece of gown, or what you guys made, was just amazing because that's the difference between you were able to um, save a life or not. If you don't have the PPE yourself, you could have find it difficult to go and even go near someone who's itching got COVID. Uh, there's also a big piece of this was about funerals and burials. And we had a lot of unwarranted, untimely deaths of people who actually passed away with COVID. And it was these PPEs that helped organizations like ours to bury them. No one was ready to even, even go to bury these the people out there because everyone's worried about the fact you might catch COVID in that process. But the, the level of uh, commitment that was done by organizations like all of us, and we, I've never met Tanya yourself or even Zegum till, till today probably, mm -hmm. but the link that created between all of us, just the, the link of humanity, and, and, and went beyond mosques, beyond religion, your belief system, beyond your orientation or whatever um, background you came from, but we were able to step up as a community, which I think just gives testament, and I think Zegum was talking about Birmingham being at the forefront of this, and we're really proud of that, actually, in a most humble manner, by the way, <laughs> uh, as Muslim. But it's a fact that we, we, I think sometimes when you're in a larger city, which is so diverse, like London, you get lost up. I think we as a community got together, I think. And that's a huge difference if you think about it. And similarly, when I, when I think about my mosque, and you spoke about mental health. Initially, we started talking uh, to people who were, who were isolating, shielding. We knocked on their doors and we used to stay fine and say, how are you? How are things with your home? What's going on? All they needed is for someone to go to them and have a bit of a chat because they can't get out of the houses. It was quite a strange feeling. So we would, what we did from the mosque is started doing a call. Again, this is something that Greenland started and we picked up and think, I said, hey, that's a great idea. Um, it's always good to replicate things and do it better rather than reinvent the wheel if it's not needed, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And we started calling people. So our, our team of, within, the, within our um, mosque, uh, uh, sisters and brothers, started calling people and saying, how are you doing? How can we help you? Do you need any uh, support, even financial, or maybe something just need to pick up a prescription from your from your pharmacy, just to do that. It, and if you jot your memories down to that, those days, it was difficult to even get that bit of uh, of support actually. So you know, if there was ever a silver lining, is about the work that we've all got got together for the community, the community stepping up, and the link that is created between all of us. And we sat here, uh, four organisations put together. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, and you mentioned that telephone befriending service, you know, we also started yes. a befriending service that Tours did and we found that, you know, people just needed somebody at the end of the call, you know, yes, that's just, they weren't speak. they didn't have family nearby, they didn't have people, they were isolated, yeah. that one phone call a day or what, one a week or whatever it was with that food parcel yeah. was amazing for that, those it people, it changed people's lives and it saved them, it saved them during this pandemic and now we got... So many thank yous from people saying if it wasn't for you, if it wasn't for that call, if it wasn't for that um, exercise class that I was looking forward to or that food parcel coming, knowing that food was coming, you know, we wouldn't be able to survive the pandemic. So that that telephone service was something um, unique. And if Green Lane must you don't suffer and they were already leading on that, that was great because uh, I didn't know that the, that service was yeah, already yeah, in yeah, place. So. That's great. So we've kind of replicated what you've done there. So that's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Um, and we are talking about Asafa and we're inside Asafa Institute today. So those we wanted to show you the building from outside. We wanted to go for the walk in the local park and show you the beauty around here. It is one of the most deprived neighborhoods of Birmingham, unfortunately. And it's the kind of people that we want to really help. And, and, and that's why you are based here, you're based where you are, yeah. you're based where you are, and Asafa is based here, right in the heart of the community that we need to serve the most. And I was going to invite Taz Khan today from Asafa, but unfortunately, due to other commitments, couldn't be here. But we've kindly been allowed into the building, so we want to say thank you to Asafa, all the the team from Asafa. But Asafa do outreach projects, and Brother Zagam knows a bit about the work that they do, so that's why I invited you to also put your other hat on yeah. and talk about Asafa. <laughs> so, you know, as a, as a volunteer at Asafa, and you know, this was the first place I ever volunteered, um, and so I was looking for something to do um, a few years ago, and, and I came across the Asafa Homeless Project, 
And that the Homeless Project is a, is a really, really nice entry point for so many people who've never, never had a taste of volunteering. Mm. I often, you know, when I meet people and they want to kind of get into doing some, some sort of good in the world, I tell them to go here because it's a very organized, very, uh, you know, well, well run project. And it's an hour of volunteering. So it's only one hour. You can pick kind of which day of the week you'd like to come to the feeds. Um, and then just be, you can befriend. You can just uh, talk to talk to people who are you know living on the streets because they don't have you know that social interaction. They don't have they don't meet kind people, and some of them you know they they reduce to tears very quickly as soon as you show them some kindness because they're not used to it. They haven't mm-hmm. seen it, and and you know they only ever get told to move on or, or to get abuse from people coming out of you know clubs at late at night, and um, so they don't really see you know people who are, who actually care about them. Mm-hmm. And, and so really one humbles you completely because you mm-hmm. realize your blessings in life when you when you meet people who have so much less and and yet you know are, have their own struggles in life and yet you can contribute and help just by giving time they don't you know the project is is run by contributions from all the volunteers that are you know and further afield um, so it's not money that's needed it's just volunteering time like the I don't know if you know about the sub zero um, project, which is no. when, when the temperatures usually drop below zero in the yeah. winters. We run a night shelter at Asoka. Yes, I have heard of that. Yeah. Which, which um, Asoka Palat was like one of the front runners in, in taking over yeah. the nights. Yeah. So we couldn't we couldn't run that project for many, many years, even at that, the volunteer base we have, because the sacrifice is big. Um, you've essentially got to stay up the whole night um, and sit with the, with, the, with the people sleeping in um, and, and watch over them, basically. So. And everyone's got to go to work the next day, or yeah. they've got other commitments. It's a big ask, and it's cold. It's it's you know it's it's not the best kind of you know uh, time of year to to, to do this. Mm-hmm. So we put out a call. I think it was last year we put. That's last year. So it was, um, just to add to what Sagi yeah. said, and I have no comments saying we've learned outreach from these guys here so far. Yeah. No doubt about that. They've taught us the best to do in terms, of, at least from a Birmingham perspective. As well as Egan said, two pieces that we got involved with initially was the night shelter. From 8 p.m. in the night to 8 p.m. in the morning, you'd have to be in a place um, that would be secure for those who are actually homeless to come to a, a warm place, a secure place, plus food as well. Uh, and this we did over the three months of last year, as in so December, January, February, March, actually four months really. Uh, Sheikh Zahir and the Sufa gave a call out to all the mosques in Birmingham. I think 16 turned up uh, for a meeting, and then I think out of those, three uh, plus the loft and, and, and all of us got together. And we did this project for the entire week, for day after day, from 8 p.m. in the night to 8 p.m. in the morning. It was fantastic. I mean, it was an eye-opener for all the volunteers. And we, we did three days, two nights, maybe three day, three nights, depending on, on what the uh, volunteers' pool was like. If others were struggling, we would step in. But we would definitely do the Saturday night and the Sunday night going into Monday morning. It was brilliant. We, 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 we were, like, quarreling as to who would be there uh, at night. Yeah. So it was amazing. And we used to have... 20 odd volunteers. I remember I was just talking about this the other day. There was one night, there were 21 people sleeping, but there were 24 volunteers. So you had to tell them to go off, go into the, uh, go into <laughs> the town and yeah, just find out food and people. stuff. That was the number of people. And on the back of that, of course, there's the homeless feed. So every, there were four days in a week where a stuff would feed, would feed around about 100 people uh, on, a, on, a, on these four days. We then went to a sofa and said, look, you're doing it four days. Please let us do a fifth day. So there was no uh, feed on a Saturday. So now much fellow picks up um, the feed on a Saturday. And again, we're working under a sofa and it's fine. It's okay to not uh, reinvent the wheel. Just tag along, do nice without actually being, uh, have to do, do the whole thing all over again under your name. So we, we, we did that. And now that's what it's been a year. And we're going to continue over the next year as well uh, for this feed that we do. In the in the middle of the, the pandemic, uh, most of these homeless um, guests would have been um, they were they were they were they were resided in two different homes around dotted around the on the city. So there would be someone in 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 uh, uh, Northfield, someone right in Walsall, where where they could find places for the, the guys. What we did was take take the details down, and we would do deliveries to these people right across the city. There were about um, seventeen eighteen of us on a Saturday, just pick up the food from the Lionel Street or so far, and then go on deal. And these uh, similar what does was done over the week as well. But we never stop the homeless feed. And I don't think so we should ever, ever stop the homeless feed whatsoever. But again, like Brother Zegum said, yeah. an eye-opener to get into, into uh, this kind of community work. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, and, and 
it, 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 you can't kind of underestimate uh, how how kind of how much help that was. Yeah. Because at the time that Masjid al Falah came to help with us, uh, uh, the Sub Zero project especially, it wasn't for want of trying that we wanted to offer because you know to to, the, to turn away uh, a homeless person on a cold night <coughs> and say sorry we can't man the shelter today, you're on your own go and sleep on the street takes a lot of lot of heart mm-hmm. right to have to have to, have to do that, yeah. and and so when we put the call out we know it's a big ask our super knows because we've done it for for years right. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's brothers who are who within within Asufa, right? And, and and you know, they are complete unsung heroes. Correct. Uh, you know, they never you their ne- name never comes up, right? Because they will they will never come on camera. They will but they are the ones, they're mm. the backbone of all these projects, right? I'm gonna name two, right? There's so many, right? But I'll name two. One is Khalid and he's like the the the, the backbone of the, the sub zero project itself. He'll never seek any kind of you know recognition or publicity for it but he's the guy who will, who will clean toilets and he will run mm. the project he will he will turn up earlier uh, than all the volunteers and have everything set up and, and, and cleaned before we even arrive because he wants to be the one who gets to do it because he, he, he can go out of his way that much yeah. um, you know he's an inspiration I view him as one of my one of my mentors in life right because I'd love to be be like him you know in, 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 in the future another one is Yasser Taj who's who's uh, the He's, he's the outreach, outreach coordinator at Asufa. And he's behind all of the outreach projects. Yeah. Yet hardly anybody hears of him except for us organizations yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. because we deal with him. But other than that, he will never come onto camera. He won't mm. discuss you know, uh, the work he does. He doesn't tell, tell you know, kind of, you know, even people in the street sometimes don't know who he is. And yet we know yeah. that without him, so many of these projects wouldn't even be possible. He's linked to all us. Yeah. He's yeah. linked all of us, by the way. He's yeah. linked with you, with, yeah. with, with Brother Yeah, yeah. He's linked all of us, to be honest. Yeah. And he facilitates, Amazing work. he facilitates everybody and he makes all of these projects happen. Yeah, he does. And he's the uh, true unsung hero because, because mm-hmm. you know, the, the <coughs> pandemic especially has been the finest hour for many people. Right. Right? I, mean, I, I would put you, you know, you know, in, in the top category for that, yourself yes. especially, right? And because you guys, as soon as the, the pandemic happened, uh, it, uh, Active All Being Society straight away without yeah. like yeah, blinking yeah. an eye yeah, yeah. were like here's what we'll be doing I yeah, was yeah. on I was on the food group initially yeah. until I started the PPE campaign and then I left because I said I've got to concentrate on that yeah, yeah. immediately well, that was immediate that it was, was literally and immediate. that's the uh, testament to our chief executive Karen yeah. Craven who stepped up because we just put a WhatsApp group together we got partners in and said what can we do immediately and Organization like yourself just stepped up. I remember coming to point. the first meeting at your office you know, just by the Gusser factory, and I walked in, there were like a group of people, and just the conversation happening. I didn't even have a clue what was going on. Yeah. Yeah. And the numbers, the, 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 scale, you know, the yeah. scale of it was staggering. And I sat there thinking, I have no idea where we're to start. But Karen's vision, the way she handles meetings, was amazing. She's like, okay, you're doing like this, these are the action points, let's get it. And before I knew it, I was in a group, I was getting emails. Was the next on on the next um, Zoom meeting? I, it was just done like that. Right, you are doing so much. The one thing uh, we learned through the process about how, how as you know, you spoke about the batches. You know, you spoke about batches, how the software. So we st- we on our end started working on how to um, make a streamline the process in such a way it, it reaches more impact. But amazing work again from Todd, as Zegem said, on it immediately. Mm-hmm. Just the scale though was beyond us to be honest <laughs> no, they, they really did they, they stepped up straight away yeah and, and the organizations they brought together were actually Absolutely. uniquely diverse correct and um, so i actually made lots of friends out of that group even though i was only on it initially <laughs> yeah, right yeah. because because we knew then at that point who was active correct, yeah. so we knew which are the people who you can now go to for any other issues correct, yeah. so sometimes we were just getting things off each other I yeah, mean, yeah, you yeah. Know, could you look after this guy someone's come to our project or someone we're helping their project because right. So the funeral services, for example, came about like this slice. It was a link through that group that, that, that the Active Wellbeing Society set up. A volunteer from there then heard who I said, I'm leaving because I'm doing PPE. And he said, okay, so he does PPE. Okay. So, so he referred like funeral services from London to me. And, and, and then I've got to know them. And, and then one of the people who runs one of those funeral services is one of the nicest people I've met in my whole life. I was like, as soon as this pandemic is over, I'm driving to London just to meet this person, mm-hmm. right? And I've never have met him. Oh, so, God, so sometimes yeah. we don't know the good, yeah. right? Because you guys stepping up at that time, because you had the opposite. You also had people who were very fearful. Mm-hmm. And, and, and we know, obviously, it's understandable, but, but then they would like kind of, you know, disappeared. We didn't see them for months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
when you had the, 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 the you know the, the few right uh, who stood up and took over running of all of these these things right um, and we've all got to know each other and it's a unique bond that's what I'm saying it's just connection isn't it we, we, it's a unique yeah. thing we say this at work we say like you know the people who worked through the pandemic period and, and, yeah, yeah. and ran the, 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 the project there's a bond that's now unbreakable between us and you know each other we don't actually know the people to yeah honest. it's the first time we've <laughs> met <laughs> other than yourself you, you <laughs> and I yeah. so I feel like I've known you for, for a years now <laughs> the one thing I love from Karen and something I actually used to talk about and this is just my Asian background I remember myself talking about right <laughs> Is about I always ask her, well, what about someone getting a repeat food parcel? What about what about this and what? And I can say, look, if someone says to you, I'm hungry, and that person has got the let's say the guts to even come up to say I'm hungry, you mm. do not question. Mm. If someone's hungry, you say fine, yeah, if you've got food, here's the food. Don't question it. That's amazing. That's a so that's a very really Islamic thing to do if you think about it. Yeah. <laughs> that's, exactly, that's the exact principle, isn't it? Yeah. 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 But I was always saying, oh, wait a minute, what about this? But you're right. It's a, it's a very Islamic thing. Yeah, we're, we're, we're nobody to question right. Right, whether some, what someone's need is. Yeah. So if somebody needy asks you for something, you give it. Yeah. And and you give it. And you don't worry about whether they're, they're genuine, whether they're being honest or Correct. not. Because that in that in that process, the person really needed it, right? And it's packed up the the, 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 you know, the courage. courage to just go up because that's not easy to, no, ask, no, to no. go and ask somebody for food no, exactly you know, and, you know, you know, it's hard I it, know it yeah. must be it must be so difficult right you know and maybe, maybe we personally never experienced it mm. because yeah. because it must be really you know uh, soul destroying for Correct. them you know and 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 then for that one person who's done it and then you react in a way of like oh, well have you had one before yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. and, and it's something we learned from the homeless project so they were referred to as guests correct and we treat them as guests because they are our guests mm-hmm. absolutely we've been given the opportunity to serve them to, to be able to serve them and that's the opportunity purely that's an opportunity it's not we're not doing anybody a favor we're not doing somebody you know uh, no. what's it called mm. some sort of mercy here yeah the issue is that like we've been given the opportunity to be able to give them the food that you know and, and, and what a privilege that is Absolutely. because who are we yeah. who are we to to be able to feed somebody right. else beyond ourselves so that principle is a brilliant and fantastic <laughs> you know, i didn't know that that, that, that Karen, you know, karen's that. always said that to us every time i yeah. had to look in initial days i used to ask about this yeah. and she said are they all don't ask just, just if they give. need it don't ask give. it you give it if you got yeah. it and that we didn't have to have any no. kind of voucher for a food parcel. Nothing. It was just a simple request online. If you couldn't do it online, somebody could fill in. Yeah. Somebody could call. Oh, that's right, yeah. Whatever method that they can use to get that, you know, information across to us. And that's the beauty of the project is that you know it doesn't matter who. Everyone needs it in their own way, and they just have to ask for it. We just want. We're coming up to a crucial time now. That, you know, it's yeah, Christmas yeah. time. It's cold. It's winter. There's going to be lots of people out on the streets that we can still help. So over the next week, I know Asafa are doing some uh, food as well. And, and every day of the week, there's somewhere yeah, that well. people can go. Homeless people, yeah, needy yeah. people can go get warm food. And not only that, we, well, we worked with Penny Appeal to get dignity packs. So dignity special, products. Yeah. You know, during this pandemic, people were washing with washing up liquid. They didn't have yeah, the yeah. right products. You know, toothpaste, simple things like that, sanitary products for the ladies. We then got together with Penny Appeal and we uh, ordered in, I don't know, I think 50,000 products or something, put together dignity wow. packs. And yeah, these dignity packs easier. were given with the food parcels. So. They were brilliant. Yeah. Because again, as uh, Jacob said about, uh, about soul destroying for some of them, you know, uh, we just, we, we saw it. So I, the form that was created with JAWS, um, it was really good because you could call up and say, I need food, but I need this as well. And that's it. Mm-hmm. And then we would give them packs. And yeah. it was really good, actually, um, for anyone to want them to receive one of these, actually. Because you, you, you never ask food as a natural yeah. piece, but also, as yeah. I said, dignity pack is really good as well. By the way, thank you for that as well. No, that's a, I think that was a great, great idea, and it really helped people. So uh, we true. can learn from that yeah, as well. It's actually nice to, to, to give more than somebody else. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think that's a really yeah. nice concept. Right. Um, mm. Because your your idea is to 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 help them right as much as possible, right, and, yeah. and, and alleviate a problem for for you know for, for them, and without them having to ask if you could able to give that, that's that's really, you know, it's really good that, that you guys took the initiative on that. Mm. I think one of the one of the things maybe we should we should talk about as well though is the um, the, the mental health kind mm. of uh, side of uh, of the pandemic because um, you know with with the active well being society in particular and the deprived communities we serve. 
Um, I'm seeing it more and more at the moment. The fact mm. that the, the mental health side is really starting to now um, come out because you know it's been what, you know eight yeah. nine months yeah. now, right? So, um, and so many people are, are hidden away. Um, I, I I actually came across somebody on the on the weekend, um, where there was a lovely a lovely guy, right? Who was twenty six days straight. He's refurbishing somebody's house. And he's refreshing, you know, the, the person whose house it is has got a disability where they've got a, uh, some sort of a disease which, which, which eats away at their calf muscles. Oh. So this person had depression and the, the pandemic's made them really isolated and really made it all worse. And they were crawling along the floor in this house with broken floorboards and, and all sorts of issues, trying to, 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 you know, get to the toilet and use the sink and, and everything else and, and get to the kitchen. And this person's come across them and said, I've got to do something. Mm. And so he's actually convinced that person to go and get help. Um, so he wouldn't talk to him. He had to talk him, to him through the window, win his trust. He made him go into, into, into hospital for treatment. And while he's gone, this guy has been for 26 days refurbishing the house. Wow, what wow. a beautiful story. So he story. put out a call and said, look, I need, I need items. And then the community responded and said, right, I've got a bed, I've got a mattress, Super. I've got a sofa. And he, he was principled about how he did this. He said, I only want things that are new. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Because why we don't we don't want to dump something on somebody mm-hmm. and say, Well, I've got to spare this, right? No, new. Yeah. So that it's how we would want it to be for yeah. ourselves, right? Because right. the person is not any less than how what would you want for yourself? Yeah. Um so so he's been doing this, right? So I just came across him and then the case was related to depression because the person as they become more and more depressed, the the, the conditions deteriorated. I thought, how many more of those are yeah, there out yeah. there that we yeah. don't know about? And how do we find out? And how can we help them? And I think, you know, that may be something that we can kind yeah. of work together on. So we're talking about the community, you know, mm. that there was a food shortage. We couldn't get enough food from food share. We couldn't get enough to, you yeah. know, we needed certain tonnage of food. And we had to turn to community and the community stepped out. It was yes, beautiful. You you remember yeah, 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 the call came out and people started donating. People started coming out. Food collections were happening on streets. Yeah, you know, yeah. children were getting collections. You know, children were getting involved, and this it just it was a, a time that was critical for us to continue with the food. And uh, we wouldn't ha- wouldn't have enough food. I remember, and then when, that came in to keep complete the stocks that we needed. I remember when George put that call out, and I said, "Listen, we asked whether how many." Um, uh, how many deliveries we have on a day? I think, and there was about thirty or so. We said, "Well, till you get the tonnage in, we will we will supply." So we, we already had a pantry moving, yeah. and we kept a little box outside. This is a big box. We got from Costco and put it outside the mosque, and we put a little padlock on it. Everyone knows the number for the padlock because yeah. every single day that box would be full. We never had a day when there was nothing inside the box. It was amazing. People just come. They need the lock and number. They would just mm. open the lock. Um, Put the food the in and lock it back again. It was amazing. It was just by just default from 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 me and because I'm a believer in Allah. So it's like, Allah just gives it like that, you know. Uh, it's quite amazing. Um, just moving forward before I forget, I need to go in a bit. But yeah, um, two things. One is that we need to do something with doors for the mental health, uh, whether it's attached to physical. Uh, so whether it's a run or a walk or a cycling, I think I think we we'll need your help because uh, there's a lot of need out there. Yeah. Once the pandemic slows down, we really need to do something about. Men- Myself as well, physical health. Um, and the second one is that we are moving towards, as you said earlier on, uh, towards a free school meal, uh, Christmas hampers, and and food parcels for the next two weeks. So mm-hmm. beginning on Saturday, right up to the uh, the third of Jan, uh, we uh, from the masjid as well will be doing the entire uh, these few days. Fantastic. Uh, That's good to know. So they. And if volunteers have got time free, do you need volunteers to help? Definitely yes, yeah. definitely yes. So they, so they can approach ourselves or yourself. Yeah. I, even schools, we've approached schools uh, this time around. Um, we did the same thing in the last half term. We gave away about 600 food, food meals during during that time. Uh, and again, we'll do the same again this, this time. So we've approached schools and said, whoever comes out of, sort of, does not fall within the free school meal, or if, you, if that person or the family needs anyway, we're more than happy to help out. So. We're doing that over the next two weeks or so. Brilliant. That's great to hear. Well, we'll share you the link to your pages. I've yeah. already tagged in your Instagram page to this. Okay. So, um, and any other way that people can contact you? Um, so it's on all of the social media. To be social honest. media. So Facebook and Instagram. We're on Twitter as well. Yeah. Uh, I think my number's probably yeah. around everywhere, so you can always get in touch. Thank you. Thank you for, for that. So we're coming up towards the end of our time. We've done 45 minutes of our time now. 
And I just want to say thank you both for you. joining me today on this live video. I know we didn't get our physical exercise in, <laughs> but I'm going to hold you to that. I want you both at Edgebaston Reservoir, yeah, and okay. we'll hopefully see you in the new year. Awesome. But we'll try and do our journeys towards physical health as well as our mental health as well. And like you said, if any of your service users or mustard users looking uh, to overcome mental health issues and want to walk group or a running group or yeah. a cycling group, get in touch because we'll tours do, yes. do a lot more than just you know the food and, and the telephone yes. service definitely as well. Yes. Yeah. And likewise, for Asafa, we only touched on the, the homeless project, but they do lots of other outreach. Do you want to summarize some of the other things that the great work that Asafa do? So, so there's more projects than, than, than even I can recall. <laughs> because, so so, so the, 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 the principle is, whatever there's, wherever there's a need um, and somebody's willing to spearhead it, um, Asafa will provide the facilities for them to launch a project. So there's a domestic violence one, there's a legal um, clinic for, for, for a helpline kind of uh, issues like that. Um, so there's, there's lots of lots of different projects going on that even I'm not now that aware of because because uh, you know they haven't been coming in uh, due, due to the pandemic. But then so, so lots of these things are going on. They're all on the website. So the Asofa Institute uh, website is there. We'll have an outreach uh, section with all the different projects and how people can volunteer. And I encourage people who haven't volunteered to come in, volunteer on different projects because so many people ask, say, I'd like to volunteer, but then they feel that that you know they don't know how to go about it. Mm -hmm. But Asofa has made it quite easy. You can go onto the website and just just uh, it's, it's as dash sofa um, dot org I think. Yes, and, that's uh, right. Yeah. So you can go onto there and you can uh, you you can volunteer for many of the different projects. And if you've got a project that you think the community needs, Asofa is the kind of platform that will allow you to launch okay, it. Do, do. So it will help you. And you know, there's so many volunteers already. So it's easy to put a call out and say, look, I'd like to do this. So so I'm uh, organizing one at the moment which is to give work experience to uh, 16 to 18 year olds in, in careers and, and, and in professions where they normally wouldn't be aiming you know, that high mm -hmm. uh, from disadvantaged communities. So we thought, well, we can open this up for them if we provide, if we do the legwork of recruiting the employers, asking them to help out, and then putting together a guide so they can actually run uh, you know, through this, this, uh, this, this scheme uh, for 12 weeks, um, you know, and they would get a, an insight into a career that they normally wouldn't aspire to. So, and that again, you know, we now have a network and I, th I think that's the biggest uh, sort of, you know, great outcome of the, uh, of this, this year is we now have so many of us that we can just rely on each other and we don't feel like, I wouldn't feel like, you know, a moment's hesitation to ask any of you for help. Yeah. And like, and, and I hope it's the, you know, the, the same, yeah, reciprocal, yeah. And, and yeah. that I think is, is a great thing. And I think so many of our organizations will be able to do great things in the, in the coming year because we all met now and have done things together. Uh, and hopefully this will be a springboard for many, many more. Yeah, um, definitely. Especially in terms of uh, in terms of keeping the community active. Um, I mean, it would be a great idea probably probably to have, uh, yeah. have have kind of women's walking groups. That's really areas. fantastic. I, mean, I was thinking yeah. that actually. Yeah. Let's let's yeah. let's let's pick it offline and, and we'll yeah, we'll we'll something on that. Yeah. Brilliant. So, so thank you again. Thank you. Um, I'm going to turn the camera to me, and then I'm going to. So I've gone over by a couple of minutes, apologies. But it's really interesting chat. It's something different today. So I've not done the walk and talk, but we've sat and we've talked. And we've got really important issues out today. And we've shown how be beautiful the Birmingham people are, the community of Birmingham are, the different organizations, the faith establishments, everyone who's come together to help those who needed it the most. So. I hope that we've uh, set an example for others to watch and learn and, and be your best, do what you can and offer your support during this period, especially during Christmas period. And uh, if you need anything from the Active Wellbeing Society, you know how to get in touch with us. Any of the organizations we featured today, they've got their own individual websites and please do get in touch and offer your, your help, you know, volunteering, whatever you can do, donations. So thank you again, we're gonna leave it there. And we hope you have a fantastic um, Christmas period and a happy new year. And um, in the new year, I'll be back to doing my walks. This was going to be my last walk today as I'm on annual leave. But there is another walk, a special one from the farm next week. So when I'm back uh, on Wednesday, just for that one day, we'll be doing a sensory walk. Fingers crossed, weather, weather permitting, we'll be doing a walk and showing the, the children some lovely animals and some of the great work that happens at the community cafe at Borsal Heath City Farm. So that's Wednesday the 30th, the final one for the year. And then 
on to better and bigger things in the new year once this pandemic is over. Thank you guys, thanks for watching. Please do share the video. I've tagged in the organizations and if you want your organization to be featured, get in touch with me. I'll come and happily do a walk and talk session with you. Okay. Take care, thank you, bye-bye.